So now that we've covered all the different windows, we have our cube here. Let's look at all the different ways we can manipulate it. So we're going to explore these tools here. So let's start all the way here on the left with the hand tool. Now what the hand tool does is it doesn't actually allow you to manipulate the object. If you click your left mouse button, you can drag the scene around. This isn't moving your objects, this is just moving your view of the objects, allow you to look at different things. So that's, this is one way you can look around, or there are options for panning around your scene. So if you hold down your right mouse button instead of your left, you can look all around. So you can change your view, use your hand, get over here, look over there. So that's one way, or a much easier way, is if you hold down the right mouse button, you can use your Q, W, E, A, S, D keys to pan. So W, A, or no, that's S, my mistake, sorry. W, S, A, D, E, and Q. And you can use your mouse with the right mouse button down at the same time to be looking at the same time. And it allows you to just really easily look at any given direction you want. All right, so there's just a tip there. So let's get back to these tools. So we, that's the hand tool. Now we look at the movement tool. Now the movement tool allows you to, you guessed it, move your object. So now we actually are moving our object in space, not our view. And you can move in any of the three directions of 3D space. So we have Z, forward and back, X, left and right, and Y, up and down. Now in the middle you have these plane options that allow you, so if you click on this X one, it allows you to move both in the Y and Z at the same time, or in the, if with this one, the X and the Y, allows you to just move on the plane. So that may or may not be handy depending on how you're trying to move. Now, over ne next we have the rotate tool. Now that allows you to rotate in any of the three dimensions of space. And we finally we have the scale tool. So that allows you to, I'm actually going to undo all that rotation because that's annoying. Now you can scale in any given dimension or you can grab it by the middle and you can scale in all three directions at the same time if you just want to make it bigger or smaller without changing the proportions. Next, we have the rect tool. Uh, I'm just going to show this to you, just to, but you're not really going to be using this in this course. Uh, the rect tool is more for two-dimensional games. Um, for instead, not doesn't really have much use in 3D, so we're going to skip over that. And then we have the move, rotate, and scale tool. So this could just be a way to easily have access to all three of the uh, manipulation tools at once. Now you may find that convenient, or you may find that too easy to click on the wrong thing and just find it frustrating. It's up to your personal preference. Uh, then we have the custom tool, but we don't really have any custom tools right now, so uh, that you, we can we can ignore that. Now, uh, so you can choose these different manipulations uh, with by clicking on these different buttons, or with a shortcut, you can just press Q for the hand tool, W, E, R, T, Y, and, and Y, uh, and that you do that without pressing you know the mouse button or anything, just clicking it plain, and it'll it's just a shortcut for, to make things easy for you. Now, so we can gradually manipulate things, or if we come over to the inspector, we can also change them very to very specific values here in the transform. 
Uh, so if we see the position, we can very specifically set its position to, let's say, 0, uh, 10. Oh, we put it outside of our field of view. So we're going to zoom out until we find it. There it is. And 0, 0, 0, 0. And there we are back at normal. Now, this is just to show we can put whatever values we want, but I'm going to put that back at zero, actually. So, now, I want to give you, give you a few tips. So, I'm going to add an additional object here. I'm going to add a floor, just so we can see something here. So, if we come down to the hierarchy, if we click on this plus button or if we just click right click in any empty space under the hierarchy pulls up the same window but if we come down to 3d object we can add more 3d ob objects so we see here the cube already we can add a sphere or we can add capsules cylinders planes uh, these, for now, these are really the ones we want to worry about. Uh, we're going to add a plane. So, now, I'm going to delete the sphere here. So right now, it in 2D space, and on our 2D screen, it looks like that cube is, you know, sitting on the plane, right? Well, if we pan around... Oh, we can clearly see, no, the plane's really far away, and it's way down there. So when you're moving objects around, you really want to be careful to... Okay, come on. To look in different directions as you're lining things up. So I move that cube, you know, it looks like I kind of lined it up in the corner, but I really want to pan and see, oh, nope, I clearly didn't. Let's check the other direction. Well, that's closer. And then, you know, if you don't, close enough, it isn't going to work for you. You can set it to, oops, I meant to click five. And negative five. Oh, 4.5. My mistake. I put the center of the cube on the exact corner. We want the edge of the cube. 4.5. There, now it's in the exact corner. Now, another tip as well is this 0, 0, 0 here is the exact center of our world. A common mistake people make is, you, you noticed when I put the plane down, I, I, when I added the plane, let's try it with a sphere here, it just places it somewhere in the center of your scene. It may be, you know, it may be where you want it, or it's likely going to be super far away from where you actually want it to be. If you don't pay attention to that center of your world, you you start to lose any sort of reference for where the center is. So people often add the sphere and think, oh, that thing's really small. Well, let's make it big and tell it... I'm going to delete this plane this cube. So, so, yeah, now we've lost any reference for size in the world. So I've added the sphere. This looks really small. I'd better... And make it bigger until, hey, that looks about right. So now I'm going to add a plane. Oh, that plane's way too small. I now need to make that even bigger until I've got a ground. And it just goes from, it just goes from there. Every, you, you start to have an enormous world when you didn't intend to. And you've centered your world in just some weird, obscure portion of space that can just make things really frustrating later on. It's also really easy to get accidentally get super far zoomed out 
and it just may, really makes everything really difficult. It's, these are just mistakes I've seen plenty of new beginners make, even myself when I was first getting started. So I just want to make sure you're watching that. So really be careful to base your world around zero, zero, zero. And if you double click on an object in your hierarchy, it'll zoom to it.